27,495 euro. I may mention that price a lot on this video today because this is one of the most market disrupting electric vehicles that has ever been launched in automotive history. It doesn't matter what region of the world you're watching this car in, it has been designed to put it up to every more established brand that you can think of. It's literally got a pair of rifles and is pointing it at the Cupra Born, the ID3, everything from Kia. It will charge as fast. It will kind of go as far. It's rear wheel drive. It's not quite on a par in certain interiors, but then again, for lots of them, it's like, whatever. And this genuinely is a car that's probably gonna change how Ireland looks at electric cars. It's the MG4, and today we're gonna to have a massive look at it. So welcome to Nobby on Cars. LED daytime running lights, depending on whether you go for the higher spec one, will sit down here. But that I've deliberately taken this shorter range standard car to give you a real idea of what you'll get for the bare minimum price. So you still get decent looking LED lights. I don't care what way you describe it, the, the nose of that car is good looking. There's a groove around the bonnet here, plastic which goes down here and a nice MG badge so that all of a sudden owners of this car are going to be very proud of I think because they're going to have serious feelings of smugness going on when they go yeah, my car does that. Yeah, my car, my car can charge 135 kilowatts or 117 in the standard car. Yeah, the long range do over 400 kilometers. Yeah, standard range over 300. Rear wheel drive, is yours? Yeah. Like, it genuinely is, it's a game changer in EVs. Much fuss has been made about these hubcaps that do actually clip off the car, but it's not actually quite easy to do. So they look like alloys, but they're not. And it actually doesn't bother you because they're decent quality, it's fine. Around the side we have harsh plastic here, but that's gonna protect the paint from stones. Black mirror housing, quite a large C-pillar. That does kind of get in the way when you're driving if you're trying to look over your blind spot. We have uh, SAIC vision, it's our LED lighting system. That corner reminds me of a Yaris. You know, the current Yaris, especially just the way this works. We have a boot of 363 litres, well over a thousand if you drop the seats. It is a bit smaller than some of the competition. It's smaller than an ID3 and a Cooper Bourne and the Kia Nero, for example. Definitely smaller, no two ways about it. Couple of negatives, so this is your Type 2 cable. You'll get just over seven kilowatts. We're not getting 11 kilowatt in Ireland. Although MG Ireland say they can give that feedback to MG and see where they go with it. But that would be very, very welcome. There's also no heat pump coming to Ireland and the UK, but definitely Ireland. And again, with temperatures that we have, do you need, do you not need? There's lots of discussion on the internet about it. Go knock yourself out. A little bit of a storage net. Down here, you might expect some storage for cables because there's no fruit, but there isn't any. It's just spare tire, carry on. So I've deliberately put these seats all the way back, especially on this side. There is a cut out of the back of the seats, which does mean that you get a bit of space for knees. You can fit your feet under the seats and the bench could, depending obviously on how tall you are, I'm not six foot, unfortunately. So I'm actually okay here in terms of rear leg room. You'll fit three people and there's kind of a flat floor. There's like that much of a home. So there's still room for that middle person's grown up size feet if that is the type of passenger you carry a lot head height that's what it's a good that's a good five four inches of spare room there's no armrest and the rear view i don't find it too bad actually i think it's, it's quite okay it reminds me of the seven year warranty on the car because there's a sticker there and again that's that's comparable with the best there's one usb c charger down here and that would be nice to have something else for kids because they you're gonna have two of them wanting to charge things you know it's just the way life goes i know some of you watching have wondered is it a bit dark in here it is with the black leather and 
the black roof lining it's not like depressingly dark but it is it is quite dark and that C spit that C pillar is so large that that doesn't exactly help light flood in you get good quality plastics in here there's a floating area for phones there are kind of cable hooks down here to thread your cable through the charger of which there are two there's USB-C and USB but you can't get anything down there the seat has a very quick lie back solution if you're charging and you want to have a bit of a kip although as I was doing it last week in a different car people still don't mind knocking on your how long are you going to be Anyway, there's no uh, light here for your vanity, but there is a sunglasses holder, so people do like those kind of things. It's uh, LED, no it's not, it's uh, normal halogen bulbs in some parts of the cabin. The rotor jog wheel is still here um, for your regen braking. There's four levels, you can leave it on automatic, but you've got to go into your screen here to sort that. Now, people have also commented about a little bit of lag uh, in, in the infotainment system. I can't say that I've seen it in this bar maybe pushing the odd button twice but it is unusual to have to go into your regen couple of shortcut buttons they bring you to home you know it's quite a simplistic layout like the id3 like the cooper born like all the competition there's a very very small bit of netting down here that you could also probably stick another phone into armrest has got decent space a lot of you are asking about the quality of the material here for the the seats there's good bolsters on it they're obviously the standard seats you can get leather ones on the uh, higher spec exclusive range they'll have flashes of cloth but more leather going on and you can hide things away down here as well with uh, your cover for your center console so the interior look there's there's a good bit of scratchy plastic in it but overall especially the steering wheel and the buttons on the steering wheel uh, it feels quite all right and there's a seven inch screen here as well that gives you your range and your cruise control modes and all that kind of stuff that is very very easy to use good quality resolution on that um, this entry level doesn't have a reversing camera but the higher spec models have 360 uh, degree view cameras so look it depends what you want to spend but I just love the idea that this is the, the standard range standard car so everything you see in this video is what you can get at the bare minimum price standard Excite is 170 brake horsepower extended range Excite 203 and then the exclusive is also 203 but you never feel like there's not enough power even in the lower brake horsepower version of the car the turning circle is really really good that rear wheel drive punch just gives you confidence going into corners and I have to say it, it really is a nicely planted car in terms of center of gravity and is a somewhat rewarding car for an electric and especially the price it just keeps going back to the price like there's enough punch you can chuck it into corners it feels or dare I say it there's a hot hatch a rear wheel drive hot hatch vibe to the MG4 and there shouldn't be Twisty is a very enjoyable car to drive mountain roads city urban environments it is well behaved it's obviously smooth it's easy to drive uh, it handles bumps reasonably well. I mean, you, you do bobble around a little bit depending on the road surface. I'm trying to straddle, I don't know, three different surfaces here because, hey, welcome to, welcome to Irish roads. Energy efficiency, I'm talking somewhere around 21 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on a motorway. And then around town, I very quickly saw about 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers i don't want to say that's the final figure because i just haven't had enough time with the car i would like a little bit more time just to really figure that efficiency figure out but so far so good adaptive cruise control is brilliant so i used it earlier on today it will stop with the traffic in front it will start moving when the car in front starts moving again so if you do a lot of motorway traffic and you encounter traffic jams it would be an absolute godsend. You control the distance and everything from the car in front, all that usual stuff. It's quiet, there isn't a huge amount of wind noise over the pillars uh, as you cruise around. Like, I, I suppose the price of the car is always in the back of your mind, but it's very hard just to not judge this car as an actual EV and a new one on the market and just go, 
God, like this is a really, really solid offering. Like any sudden input to the wheel and there's nice feel to that as well. It, it, it has a sporty feel to it. I, I, I don't know what to say. It really does. If you watch this in the UK, by the way, it was just under four miles per kilowatt hour. God, you guys, have, it's confusing how you guys do things, but that's the fuel economy. You do get a bit of a reflection off that 7 inch screen in front of you, so if you don't really like looking at your own face, um, that may be a problem because it is kind of glaring back at you. It's quite polished and shiny, and there's a very high gloss finish to it. It's been again well covered in lots of other videos that I'm sure you've watched but there's a good quality feel to the buttons and the steering and Now there was a, quite a bit of vibration with the cabin there because the road surface I was on was just a dog An actual dog, but it's so nippy. It just picks up speed very very quickly It's changing lanes is never complicated and it just happens very Quickly without any sort of fuss it will adapt to speed signs and it can become aware of them with the camera on the front car. Like it, it's just such a great package. I'm in a turn here. I'm gonna just demonstrate this turning circle. And it's just like, whoa, it's class. And then you floor it and a BMW 420D will just disappears behind you there is a really great sense of urgency about this car and <laughs> like it's just bombing along without any sort of fuss it's like come on let's go now the charging will take you a good 10 hours at home and it is a shame that there's no 11 kilowatt onboard charger because I used that last week in a different car and like obviously it makes all the difference if, if you get a faster charger but it, it really does make all the difference like I left it there for a couple of hours and I came back and I was on 95% you know left at the 55 or whatever but like that was it then that's all I needed I probably like you had in some ways made my mind about the MG4 having even not even driven it because it just every review every bit of feedback seems so good but it really is good okay so if you're someone who's put a deposit down on one of these cars you haven't set eyes on one yet you haven't driven one yet relax you're gonna like it i promise so the mg4 whether you go for the excite standard range or the exclusive with the long range that will creep you up into the mid 30s what impresses me is it genuinely opens up new electric car ownership to a lot more people, especially with that entry level price. And the MG Pilot stuff that you get as standard, the cross traffic monitoring, the blind spot, the frontal collision avoidance, the fact that CarPlay and Android, albeit without cables, is standard on the car. There's so many lovely bits that come as standard. And that's the stuff that really is gonna set the MG4 EV apart from so many of the competition. They've genuinely made a really good car with fast charging, all the gadgets you'd want. It looks good, rear wheel drive, it handles so well. It's an actual winner. Now, all the slots for Ireland are gone. You can reserve a production slot. You'll get it sometime in 2023, but there's a batch coming at the end of this year, another batch coming in the first quarter of 2023. And Look, you can ring around and see if there's any cancellation, this and stuff like that, but genuinely this thing is going to sell so well. And at this price, with everything you get a standard, it's very much deserved. If you've got any comments or questions about the MG4, if you've got one on order, what are you thinking? What are you looking forward to? Uh, hopefully you've answered loads of the questions that you have about the car in this video. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't yet. Come on. And comment section down below. Anything you got, please do leave it there. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for getting this far with me on the brand new MG4.